cedar I bought at an auction. Just looks like boards right now, but to me, that looks like wainscoting for the bathroom. So I want to shiplap these boards. So one will be cut on the show face side, this one, and this will be cut on the non-show face side. Now with both show faces up and sitting on a flat surface, I can bring them to each other. Let's see, I got a little bit to go. So I'll make an adjustment and keep repeating and sneaking up on it until they match. A very slight adjustment and now with a single cut instead of a multiple cut, they are just perfect. Giving the show face a very slight chamfer on the corners. Well, I'll start with 80 grit and indulge in everybody's favorite pastime. Give it a quick coat of boiled linseed oil and that brings the colors right into the cedar. And just like that, we have a whole bunch of wainscoting done. Good time to cut these to size. I got a stop lock set up at 30 inches. And we'll take the the ugly off one side. And cut to length. Now we can give everything a quick coat of water-based polyurethane. And we'll start with the back. And the first coat on the front side. Our first coat is dry. Give it a little bit of sanding with 320 grit. 320? Yeah, 320. Just to take the raised grain off from the water-based polyurethane. Coat 
Coat number two on the back. The show side. So before we actually put the second coat on this one, make sure the dust is off of it. And we'll start the second coat on the show side. The underside is done. Two coats to protect it, that's it. Getting ready for the final coat. These are pretty smooth with two coats on. So before I put the third coat on, I usually hit it with a green scotch brake pad, but I've only got a gray one which is finer. So I'm going to give them a going over with a gray scotch brake pad. And naturally, seeing as this is the final coat, I'm going to take a very slightly damp drag and make sure there's no dust on the pieces. Now, final precaution, we're going to strain our finish into a clean container. So my first piece, that's how far out of level my wall is. So I'm going to have to rip a bit off of it. So this is the normal view of the corner. So you have two choices. You can put that one in first, or you can put this one in first. But if you're looking the way that you're looking now, you want to put this one in, and then that one, and that'll make a better hide. I have a definite lack of structure behind these, this drywall here. So we're going to use a little bit of construction adhesive on the back of these things. And we'll use 18 gauge brad nails to hold it in place while it dries. And I'm not going to put a whole lot on. Get up the top and up the bottom. Inch and a half, 18 gauge nails. And we're driving them up at a slight angle. I don't want to put these things perfectly tight. So what I've got is a couple of card scrapers. There will be a molding coming across the top of this, so I'm not too worried about the nail holes. Just worried about keeping level. And of course there'll be a baseboard along the bottom too. So I think my next piece runs into the cabinet. So I'm just going to leave that off for now until I get a 
proper measurement. Now we can start on this side. And I hope I don't get too much in your light. That one on there. Get it level. Plum, I guess. Let's take the pencil. It might take a, a few tries to get. Pretty good match there in that corner and it comes up plum sure where my trim will come out from my door yet and I'm not exactly sure where the cabinet will start. I've got five pieces left over and it's good enough to get the toilet in place. So there we go we're functional again. We have a little bit of trepidation about the red of the cedar against this floor but we're hoping the color will mellow but I've got the part that's hard to keep clean done anyways. Finally I can go. Oh and one handy tip when you're working on your plumbing and you have a rag in the flange in the bottom take the rag out before you set the toilet in. Uh, I found that out the hard way just now. One other thing to consider I know You'll be sorely tempted to put a bead of caulking in there to make it look nice. Resist that temptation because if there's ever a leak there you want to know about it right away. You don't want the caulking holding it under there and rotting your floor out. So just don't put any caulking there. 